For most people, the staff of Moses is just a scepter, a rod, and Mr. Gobawan to be sure, capable of a great many miraculous phenomena, but a simple rod just the same. But what if it was more than that? What if it served a more fundamental purpose beyond the occasional miracle? What if it served, and could continue to serve, a purpose of resonant and harmonic connectivity? There are reasons to believe that it did just that, that it can do that. Reasons you'll be amazed you haven't heard of before. In the coming minutes, you'll hear why, and more importantly, how, this historical artifact and artifacts just like it, through ancient times to present day, find function in their purpose, much more than merely decorative or ceremonial in nature. The sacred staff, as it is often referred to, holds the secret to balance and harmony through frequency, enabling the user to bring their own energy in tune, to calibrate the body and the mind with the universe. The origin of the Staff of Moses finds root in the scripture of many faiths and legends, notably in the Bible. In Exodus, we first encounter the staff when God appears to Moses in the burning bush. God asks what Moses is holding, a simple shepherd's rod. Moses responds. God tells Moses to toss it to the ground. Miraculously, it transforms into a snake and back again. But what at first appears to be a form of divine magic trick soon evolves into a tool of divine action. Moses is instructed to take the staff with him to Egypt, wherewith thou shalt do signs. For most of us familiar with the Abrahamic religions, we know the stories that follow. The staff is used to instigate the plagues of Egypt preceding the Exodus, to counter the Pharaoh's sorcerers, to part the Red Sea, to magically bring about spring water for the Israelites, and to help them achieve victory in the Battle of Rephidim, so on and so forth. Similar to Moses' staff, his brother Aaron's broad brought about similar spectacles of heavenly connection, leading some rabbinical scholars to question whether they may have been one and the same staff. Either way, what were these tools? Were they gifts granted by almighty acclamation? Were they just regular rods pointed to the heavens at moments of great intervention? And why did God and Jesus both urge their disciples never to forget their staffs on missions of great importance? In some cases, even above all else, to take only their staffs. Through investigative mathematics, geometry, and theological and historical study, the mystery that shrouds the staff of Moses has been lifted in recent years. It was more than just a tool through which God's power was routed in one direction, heaven to earth. No, more than that, it allowed for energy to be conveyed in the other direction as well, back to a higher power, to the cosmos even, via frequency. Indeed, the powers of this staff transcend Moses and Aaron altogether, for we see by historical record similar devices used by Jesus and Muhammad, by Merlin and King Arthur, by great prophetesses like Isis and Mary Magdalene, and by deities and their vessels in Greek, Roman, and even Mesopotamian times. Minerva, Jupiter, Athena, even Zeus himself, they all carried a staff, rod, or spear. From hieroglyphs to written record, from pictographs to spoken legend, the concept of the sacred staff permeates through the history of humanities as much more than a godly tool, and instead as a means of reciprocal exchange of energies, a sort of antenna, utilized to magnify and boost the electromagnetic forces that compose the human nervous system. Think of it as a radio signal, bringing the energy of the user into harmony with the energy of the universe. Extrasensory perception and alignment allowing mere mortals to receive transmissions from beyond. If that seems a little far-fetched, consider this. In the 1970s and 80s, German biophysicist Fritz Albert Popp was studying biophotons when he found that DNA could send and receive a wide range of frequencies. His research led him to believe that biophotonic signals may be used in the reception, transmission, and processing of electromagnetic data, similar to how we understand the functioning of fiber optics today. Concentrated in the nucleus of our cells, the biophotons he was analyzing represented a range and a variety of frequencies originating within the DNA itself, concentrated in the nucleus of our cells. His conclusion? That biophotons appeared to instantly communicate with all the cells of the body, resonating radio waves of informational energy. To put it simply, at our very core, we are hardwired to interface with radio frequency antennas, that in some ways our bodies can serve as antennas themselves, or at the very least, 
assist in boosting signals with the right tool at our disposal. And so, the staff of Moses, the rod of Aaron, the sword of Arthur, the scepter of Isis, if they were all forms of antenna, it stands to reason that the users of these sacred staffs were in direct communication via radio frequency with the divine and the universal knowledge and wisdom that comes along with it. We know that the length of an antenna is in proportion to its frequency. An antenna's frequency is deciphered by dividing the speed of light in inches by the full wavelength of the antenna. Therefore, knowing the measurement of the Staff of Moses or any sacred staff, we can ascertain and replicate the frequency by which their powers of communication were achieved. From there, we can reproduce and channel that frequency for modern purposes. The measurement hides almost in plain sight. Left behind includes within records of the times, in objects both ancient and mystical, like the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies Temple, and those more obviously accounted for today, like the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. The measurement was lost in translation, due to the difference between the cubit and the royal cubit, as defined in ancient texts. Understanding this difference, we can accurately decode what was otherwise concealed. By these means, it has been determined that the Ark of the Covenant was 51.5125 inches in length inside. Likewise, the slope or angle of the pyramids is 51 degrees, 51 minutes and 25 seconds. We can find this number varied yet again in the length of Noah's Ark, 505.125 feet. This numerical pattern continues, with only the decimal shifting across units of measurement. The Staff of Moses and some of its counterparts can be safely measured at 51.5125 inches, in line with historical depictions of it in relation to the height of its user. We can determine then that all of these objects, the staffs, the Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, and the Great Pyramids themselves, operated with the same frequency. We can take a step further and determine that these objects were all connected, created even, to function together as if by master plan. At this height, the staff used as an antenna would be one quarter wavelength, making four staff lengths a full wavelength. 51.25 inches multiplied by four is 17.17 feet, the exact radius measurement of the Holy of Holies temple, home of the Ark of the Covenant. This is also the exact width measurement of the king and queen's chambers within the Great Pyramids. You can see then that the overlapping evidence suggests that the connection between these objects is more than just coincidental. It is intertwined as if by providence. Multiply the length of the staff by 112, the divine number found in Hebrew numerology, and you will account for the exact height of the Great Pyramid itself. The number 112 is considered to be God's own number. Signifying a balance means the gaining higher consciousness. It seems undeniable that the pyramids are divinely inspired constructions, that the staff is a transmitter, capable of routing higher consciousness to its user, in connection with the peak of Egyptian technology and architecture, resonating through frequency from our simplest cells to the most high powers of the universe. The staff of Moses is both a measuring rod and a frequency, reflecting the creation of the pyramids. It's all interconnected. With that knowledge, it's not hard to see the powers that can be wielded through its reproduction and use. Its measuring basis is found through the ages. Take Stonehenge, for example. When King Aurelius decided to construct a monument to commemorate fallen nobles lost to the Saxons, it was Merlin who suggested using giant stones in formation. And where is that formation located geographically? It rests at 51 degrees, 51 minutes north latitude and is likewise as mysterious in origin as the pyramids. History in pattern, dots connected. We see now that through mathematic deduction, the parallels and similarities repeat endlessly. But what about the sacred staff symbolism? Remember that very first biblical instance when God transforms Moses' staff into a snake? It's a transformation that occurs several times more in scripture. There's more to that than it seems. It is perhaps the sacred staffs in all its iterations, greatest point of symbolism. In Greek mythology, Hermes carries the staff, as does Hermes Trismegistus in Greco-Egyptian lore. Their staffs were entwined by two serpents, sometimes depicted with wings. This imagery is known as the Caduceus. And while you may not have heard its name, you have no doubt seen its form many, many times. 
most often in the icons and symbols of institutions and organizations. By some accounts, the Caduceus dates back to Mesopotamian times, some 3000 to 4000 BC, when the Sumerian god Ingizida had a staff with two snakes wrapped around it. In Roman times, the symbolism continued in the hands of Mercury, the messenger of the gods, whose own staff was also wound in serpents. Mercury's role sounds familiar, doesn't it? Messaging and interfacing with the gods. Could it have been the staff itself that allowed for such transmission? Similarly, and often confused for the Caduceus, is the lesser powerful but still symbolic rod of Asclepius. Asclepius was a Greek god whose staff was wrapped by a single serpent rather than two. Where Caduceus represents commerce and exchange of ideas, the rod of Asclepius represents healing and medicine. It features prominently in the emblem of the World Health Organization, for example. In both, we see an interweaving of converging harmonic principles exchange of energy, and by correlation, an exchange of well-being. Reception and transmission of balance through frequency, communication with the universe, divine resonance, and in all cases, these exchanges are facilitated by the use of a sacred staff. Ancient manifestation technology. It's no longer a secret lost to time. Understanding the principles of the sacred staffs of history we have harnessed the same resonant features to create a modern-day staff, capable of providing you with exclusive access to awesome supernatural power. Let us introduce you to the Staff of Legends. Featuring high-grade copper winding, our Staff of Legends is no static device. Using a frequency generator, it has electricity flowing through its shaft. Energized by powerful electrons, this enables the staff to take advantage of spiritually tuned frequencies, the same frequencies that Moses and so many others throughout history have been able to tap into with their staffs. The Staff of Legends upper shaft is wrapped in two serpents, providing coiled spiral energy, known in Hinduism as Divine Kundalini. Each snake features jewels as eyes, rubies on one and sapphires on the other. Above their heads, a nine-petal dolus flower protrudes 360 degrees around, fulfilling the flower's ancient significance, purity, enlightenment, self-generation, and rebirth. Cradled above the lotus, Topping the staff is a jewel-encrusted sphere inset with five sapphires and eight topaz stones, four white and four blue. Our carefully selected jewels bring an added significance and resonance to the Staff of Legends. The total number of gems is 17, a number of spiritual importance. Our carefully selected jewels bring added significance and resonance to the Staff of Legends. Jewels were a standard feature on many historical staffs and spiritual devices, and their purpose has been much more than decoration. In Exodus, we are told how Moses was instructed by God to create a gemmed breastplate with cunning work for his brother Aaron to wear in his priestly duties, with two onyx stones engraved with the names of the children of Israel, six of the tribes on one and six on the other. Aaron shall carry the name of the sons of Israel on the breastpiece of decision over his heart when he enters the sanctuary. It is believed that the high priests who wore this breastplate were able to use its jewels as a means to mitigate God's powerful energies and to his divine will. The jewels on the Staff of Legends serve a similar purpose, shooting the bearer against frequencies too powerful, while encouraging enhanced transmission. To complete the package, the bottom of our Staff of Moses shaft is tapered by a miniature obelisk, further enhancing its overall antenna mechanism. Each nuanced facet of our Staff of Legends works together in harmony to bring about powerful personal powers for the user. Benefits that simply can't be achieved by any other means. With the staff in hand, you will be able to amplify your manifesting power, enhance your psychic abilities, magnify your magnetic attraction, connect with higher spiritual energies, access ancient knowledge, broadcast your intentions more powerfully, bring positive energy into your home or sanctuary, and so much more. The Staff of Legends isn't available to all. This technology is simply too powerful to be used by the inexperienced or unknowledgeable. Only our members can acquire this ancient manifestation technology. We put these members through a stringent vetting process to ensure our staffs find their way to the right hands. Now is the time to take the step. Together, we can determine if you meet the requirements to acquire our staff of legends. You have the secrets of the universe to gain. They are waiting for you. To learn more about the staff of legends, visit staffoflegends.com